Hi, welcome to Books on the Go. I'm Anna and I'm here this morning with a spring TBR because it's spring in Australia and I'm envious of all the autumn TBRs and autumn weather that you're getting in the Northern Hemisphere. But um, I did start to put a little stack together of spring books and that went a bit off the rails, as you'll see. So it's also just a coffee and a catch up um, and what I'm doing in October. So we'll start with the books. Um, the first one is certainly in theme, that's Death in Spring by Merce Rodarida. She is a wonderful Catalan author who I discovered last year when I went to Barcelona. And I like theming books to destinations when I travel and they're there are, I was aware of some Spanish authors, but not necessarily from Barcelona or that region. Um, and so I found her and she wrote in Catalan and apparently Gab Gabriel Garcia Marquez learnt Catalan so that he could read her books. Um, she's amazing. Uh, I recommend In Diamond Square, which I started with and uh, is just like a dream. Um, and then I read this year a longer sort of family epic called A Broken Mirror, which is quite different, um, more traditional in style, but really, um, yeah, really, really moving. And I'd recommend her. So I'm looking forward to this and um, a beautiful edition. It's, I think Penguin is bringing out or has done a series on European writers. So there was another one I read called A Beautiful Summer um, by Cesare, what was his name? Pavese, and that was really interesting. So this looks good, Death in Spring. So, so far we're on track. This is in keeping with the season. And then partly because we're doing it on the podcast and also because I was so keen to read it, I picked up Trick by Domenico Starnoni, and he wrote Ties. Um, they're both translated by Jumper Lahiri. Um, Ties was a quite claustrophobic marriage breakdown in an apartment in, I think, Milan, um, and really powerful. He really sets a scene very well. Um, this, though, is set in November in Italy, so in autumn, and it's actually when I just had a quick look at the introduction, the title trick is a play on the trick or treat that children do for Halloween. So it sounds like a perfect spooky October slash autumn read um, for any of you who want to add it to your stack. Um, it doesn't sound very spring, but nevertheless, we are doing it for the podcast and I'm keen to read it. So that will be happening in October. Um, and it's the story of an older man who lives in Milan, but his daughter asks him to go down to Naples to look after his grandson while she's at a conference. And he's a bit reluctant to do it. Um, and so it's the dynamic, I think, between the older man and the young boy. So I'll look forward to that. And the Jumper Lahiri's translations are always really um, clean and high quality. So that will be good. That's trick. And then this one, La La by Jacek Denel, and just look at that cover. So I picked this up partly because of the cover. It's just so beautiful. And it's a Polish author who I haven't read before. And I thought this could be good to pair with Trick because it's the story of an old woman who is telling her history, her story and um, she's lived through the war and she, I don't know exactly, um, but it sounds like a similar, almost a similar theme uh, to Trick. And it says, and I'm going to tie it into Spring because it says on the back that the best thing about Granny, about her stories were always the beginnings and Spring is all about beginnings. And so it said that the beginning would coil like a cross between the tendril of a plant and an animal's prehensile tail and wrap itself around an object or a person or an anecdote and then goes mad. So it sounds quite fun, but I have read a review which said this is one for the patient reader, which is not me. 
Um, but it do, then it gets really good in the last 100 pages. So I'm certainly intrigued. I don't know what to expect. Um, but if nothing else, it's the most beautiful object and I have no regrets about having this um, in my shelves. So that is La La by Jacek Denel. And then we really go off the rails now because we've got a couple of books that I really want to get to and one that we're doing on the podcast. And that is the new one by Marcus Zusak, Bridge of Clay. So he's an Australian author and had a big success with his book, um, The Book Thief, 13 years ago. So it's taken him 13 years to, to write this and it is chunky. It's over, is it 700? No, it's 570 odd pages. Um, so I'm a little bit apprehensive, partly because of that I loved The Book Thief. I think that was a sort of 10 out of 10 book for me. At the, certainly at the time, I haven't revisited it. Um, and also because when an author takes that long, it just builds up a little bit of trepidation you, because, and I'm sure he felt this too, the pressure to, to beat that or to the, um, the pressure that would have been on him after the success of The Book Thief. So I'm nervous and I have heard mixed reports about this. So I'm, look, we'll just see how it goes. We will discuss it on the podcast. Um, beautiful object. He is a gorgeous writer. So I'm confident that this will be really good, but I'm a bit nervous. That's Bridge of Clay. And the next one is this amazing but chunky Killing Commendatore by Haruki Murakami. So I love Murakami, but I have a slightly um, mixed feelings now because I'm having read him recently, I'm starting to find some of his views a bit uh, dated and sexist, which is interesting. And I don't know if that's just that he's of his time. You know, he was born in 1949, so he it might just reflect that, you know, age, um, or if it's just that I'm reading them differently, you know, that I, my reading tastes have changed. Um, but the, I thought Men Without Women just wasn't quite on my wavelength, but I loved the Wind Up Bird Chronicle and all, you know, Kafka on the Shore and Norwegian Wood, um, and the recent ones, I think it's I, is it 1Q84? Uh, so this one, I, you know, I was apprehensive, but I've been watching Matthew Sharapa's wonderful reading vlog of him reading this, and it's got me actually really enthused to read it now because he did quite enjoy it, and he has sort of mixed feelings about Murakami as well. So I'm now really keen to read it, and of course I've got all these other books I have to read, and it is enormously chunky. I think it's another, is it's yeah, it's about seven hundred pages. Um, so I'm not sure how I'll get it done, but I'm very keen to read it sort of while it's fresh in my mind. So that's Killing Commendatore. Um, so that is plenty to keep me going for October. I'd love to hear what you're reading and if you do seasonal reading, what, um, what's on your radar for spring or autumn. Um, let me know in the comments and I'll see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.